Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to WCRX 88.1. Brother Jay here, and we'll get back to all of your favorite contemporary hits in just a few moments. Uh, but first, for those of you who are fans of the world of professional wrestling, it's going to be a very hectic and exciting time because next weekend, it's wrestling's biggest event of the year, the 38th annual WrestleMania, taking place on April 2nd and 3rd at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, home of the Dallas Cowboys, of course. And to be honest, it's really not just one event anymore. In recent years, the WWE has expanded WrestleMania to both Saturday and Sunday, doubling the amount of wrestling content. However, as a matter of fact, it has really expanded into an entire week with many other independent wrestling organizations who are not WWE holding their uh, their live shows and piggybacking off the big event. You got NXT, Ring of Honor, New Japan, um, Game Changer Wrestling, a, a whole bunch of other independent events, which is really exciting. It's to be honest with you, it's very difficult to list all of the wrestling content that weekend off the bat. However, you can find all the information of live events going on that weekend at postwrestling.com, which is a professional wrestling news and analysis website. And joining us right now to talk the true March Madness is the co-founder of Post Wrestling, based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This man I have listened to for many years in the podcasting realm. He is Wei Ting. Thanks for joining me, man. How are you? Hey, Jake. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm doing very well. How are you? Doing great, man. You know, it's a it's a very hectic time in the industry, and I can't wait to talk to you about it. Uh, first of all, um, I just want to say, uh, you know, I've been listening to you for a long time, and for for many years, you've been covering a lot of what's going on in wrestling. Uh, do you mind me just asking you, like, because you watch a ton of content? Uh, do you mind me just asking you, what is your week, your regular weekly viewing schedule? Because there's been more content than ever today. Because for people who don't know, uh, there's now an equally as big of a company to WWE on linear television called All Elite Wrestling, which is owned by the Khan family of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then you got other companies around the world like New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, and and All Japan and NOAA and all that, and as well as um, as well as GCW, like how much stuff do you keep up to every week, man? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's probably not as much as like some people think it's a lot for sure, but I think, um, I, it's manageable for me these days, but it's just because I'm so used to it. So it's three hours on Monday and then, you know, Tuesday, I'll typically catch NXT probably the day after, like in the afternoon. Uh, so that's another two hours. And then Wednesday night, it's AEW Dynamite, which is two hours, but a very fast moving two hours. Thursday, I usually have off. You know, we'll just kind of cover the news. And, you know, um, I also do like a Marvel podcast. So that might be my day to do something like that. Uh, and then Friday, it's two hours of SmackDown, one hour of AEW Rampage. And of course, all the pay-per-views in the evening. So, um, I mean, it, it, it uh, you know, it actually does seem like a lot when, when I'm listing it out like that. But um, I know fans that probably watch way more than even I do. You know, I, I really just kind of keep it to the shows that I'm covering and, you know, uh, whatever people recommend on the side as well. But I just kind of have my own personal limit. And I know if I watch any more than maybe, you know, stuff I have to talk about, I, I don't, I know I won't really enjoy it. So unless it's something that really catches my attention and, and, and is off the radar, I usually just keep it, keep it to the shows I, I'm covering. And it also depends on the demand, like uh, in terms of what the po- people are talking about, and you know, there has to be a ceiling on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we're always gauging. You know, let's say like you know, like when we started post wrestling, we were really just covering Raw and SmackDown, but because AEW came around and there was so much demand for it and so much interest from me personally for it, like it basically kind of has now expanded our, it like kind of doubled, you know, our our uh, our viewing time. But again, I'm I'm happy to do it because it means more interest in professional wrestling and uh, more interest for our audience. Before we get into WrestleMania, I mean, for in recent years, when you started post wrestling along with your partner, John Pollock, uh, you've also expanded uh, beyond the world of wrestling. Uh, You began to talk about, uh, you you also host another podcast with our mutual friend, WH Park regarding everything, the Marvel cinematic universe. Uh, You also talk about uh, other movies as well, comic books. Uh, This has to be like a, pretty much like a unique job for you, which is definitely fun for you uh, expanding on that as well. Totally unique. Yeah. Um, and, and a real privilege, you know, to be able to have an audience for me talking about things that I'm personally interested in anyway. And um, I think so much of that is just because we have such a dedicated fan base that, 
you know, thankfully is, is interested in what we have to say beyond professional wrestling. Something I've found in recent years is that I think even our audience has their limit for how much professional wrestling coverage perhaps um, we might do. And in fact, there might be more interest in, you know, maybe a general pop culture discussion or, or, or a coverage of a movie or, or something like that that's out there because especially on Patreon, I think um, the, the people just kind of want to hear things that we're passionate about that they might also be passionate about. Um, so, you know, something like having a Patreon and having somebody as knowledgeable as WH Park has really allowed me to be able to kind of dive right in and do a show about, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe for instance. Yeah, speaking of that, when you guys first started Post, did you expect the level of demand for your guys' product uh, when you first started? Because before that, you were uh, part of a uh, a, te- a linear television network in Canada called the Fight Network. And uh, once you've gone to your own independent ways, I mean, did you expect the amount of, like, you know, demand or or uh, wanting to, or people wanting to listen to your product? Um, I knew that we had a pretty dedicated core base of listeners so i knew that we would have some listeners but i certainly didn't i had no idea and i certainly don't think i expected the number of people that were that would be willing to pay money to support us you know that to me was a total shock from the day first day um because i always thought well we gave these shows away for free like these days who wants to pay for anything there's so much free stuff that's out there you know like whether it be music or movies or like youtube um but i i honestly was like very surprised and very touched at like the the dedication of our audience to want to simply see us succeed and to want to financially support us to be able to do this full-time and to expand our business so um it's kind of changed my perspective completely on like the relationship between creator and and uh audience and it's um made me that much more i think um grateful for our fan base that's awesome man and full disclosure i'm one of those patrons uh yeah i've you know a full dis- um it's it's funny way uh i've never told you the story but the first time uh, i've listened to you guys ever was actually i was doing uh, i was in i was in my sophomore year of high school and i was doing an american government and politics class and and it's funny enough uh, at the same time of being a wrestling fan i found uh, this funny podcast on like November of 2012. It was the election of Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. And you and John Pollock uh, of the law back in the day, live audio wrestling, were uh, doing this, uh, this one, this one, uh, this one off podcast called Review America, where you guys covered <laughs> the election. And that's where <laughs> that's where I definitely enjoyed I part of my assignment. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah that it was so funny yeah so you used us for your political analysis (laughs) not yet yeah yeah, i have other sources. i have other sources i rely on as well but i thought it was very entertaining when you and john dissected uh, what was going on in the media coverage that night as well and talking to nate milton and and other people so yeah i still have that i still have that uh, mp3 file on my computer so i still listen to that today so it's so funny (laughs) That's remarkable because, yeah, I don't know if, uh, you know, you have a more credible source than two Canadians uh, who cover professional wrestling for your U.S. election coverage. Wow. Yeah, it was it was awesome, man. I've definitely and after that, I've stuck with you guys ever since uh, meeting you guys and then as well as uh, your network of uh, your network of uh, personalities as well. It's it's it was really a fun time, man. And um and we'll now get into WrestleMania. Uh, I just want to ask, man, um, what is your personal excitement level going into WrestleMania uh, compared to other years uh, coming up in April uh, 2nd and 3rd? Okay, so, I mean, if we're talking about a scale of 1 to 10 and 10 being, like, the most excited, you know, um, I'm going to say this year will probably be a 6.5. Um, the card itself on paper, I think, is very much uh, centered around celebrity and you know nostalgia acts and very little on in-ring quality very little on i think you know um actual like good storytelling i have to say it it seems like very much a card you know that is created for the stockholder and the investor and the mainstream coverage um rather than the actual fan who watches week to week 
Yeah, and uh, going into that, uh, you've been covering WWE for for many years, and it seems like when watching the product too, it seems like they've definitely been in a rut uh, for the past few years, uh, as far as like you know just lying on what's going on in the mainstream or pop culture. And sometimes it doesn't really translate well to the regular viewers. So um, yeah, in terms of that, to me, it's kind of like the most, like one of the most underwhelming builds to WrestleMania so far. One of uh, uh, the few storylines I've definitely enjoyed was um, uh, the WWE, cha- uh, the main events, the uh, the WWE championship and the universal championship program uh, being unified uh, with that stip of uh, having both titles being unified, you got Brock Lesnar, uh, who a lot of people know, and as well as Roman Reigns. I mean, uh, definitely fighting over their uh, their special counsel or their advocate, Paul Heyman, which is such a hilarious, uh, uh, hilarious segment. And the performances of all three of them have been spectacular. So that's definitely like pretty much the only like one of the only uh, programs I'm looking forward to. It's true, yeah. I, I really enjoyed this new Brock Lesnar, you know, who just seems to be having so much fun playing a uh, good guy. You know, I, I don't know how much of this of your audience that's listening, you, you know, is familiar perhaps with like what Brock Lesnar traditionally has been, and that's just really been like this this rancor of a monster that just you know is typically pretty silent and stands behind a mouthpiece and Paul Heyman who does all the talking for him. But this year and lately, he's just become such a big fun personality uh and he seems he seems to be having the time of his life doing a lot of his own talking and just um i think he's been spectacular to watch and of course this also comes with that you know with roman reigns who he himself has completely been refreshed and repackaged ever since you know he returned as a tribal chief over a year ago so we've seen this match before we've in fact seen it at wrestlemania but this time it feels completely fresh and um with both guys i think you know renewed and 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 with a lot more interest attached to them than before for those of you who uh, are not familiar because i know that we're uh, we're on a pop uh, music station uh we have uh roman reigns has definitely reinvented himself he's one of the the big stars in wwe and for the longest time he was a uh he was one of the uh, protagonists or quote-unquote baby face as we call it in wrestling terms and at times like it really backfired on the company and a lot of people were not well, we're not behind him. So, but now when he came back over the past, I would say year and a half now, which is kind of unbelievable to think about. It's when he reinvented himself to be an antagonist uh, in the, uh, in the product or quote unquote heel, as we call it. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a refresh of his character. That was, uh, that was definitely appreciated and how much his performance really improved. Uh, it's, it's man. It, yeah. He's been, he's been one of the best still lately. What's amazing is that, like, I mean, he came back to an, uh, a year and a half ago from, um, I guess it was from COVID, really, like, or at least like a refusal to um, compete during COVID. But prior to that, he made his return after about battling leukemia. And I was yes. like one of the first to say that, okay, once Roman Reigns announced, you know, his battle with leukemia, there's no way he will ever be a villain again or ever. Uh, because I think up until that point he wasn't and um, I don't know what maybe it says something about just the great performance that he's been you know giving it, it, it because he is like the top villain in the company right now and I I think he's been so much fun to watch and uh, quickly uh, uh, moving on uh, we were recording this on Wednesday March 23rd and uh, Monday Night Raw uh, just happened just two nights ago and it was an amazing uh, opening segment uh, you got Kevin Owens uh, lately calling out uh, one of the biggest stars of all time uh, in, in WWE Stone Cold Steve Austin lately and he had an amazing segment where he uh, <laughs> where he impersonated him when coming out uh, and coming out to uh, Austin's music and I thought that was one of the, the best segments uh, in a while that i've seen from raw i thought so too i thought so too um i think the visual of anybody putting on a bald cap and doing a stone cold steve austin impression would be fun but i mean it's especially funny because it's kevin owens um and the music fake outs worked really well you know everybody knows the glass shattering steve austin music and they did that not only once but twice and that crowd absolutely bit every single time so um I'm really happy for Kevin Owens. You know, this is a prime spot in a WrestleMania. It's not a full-on match, but, I mean, there are rumors that it might even close out the first night. So, um, 
it's probably the closest that Kevin Owens will ever get to re- main eventing of WrestleMania evening and doing it next to somebody who is probably an idol of his, as he is, you know, to many of us who used to watch wrestling at sure. that age and Stone Cold Steve Austin, that reaction is going to be tremendous. I expect it to be a brawl if it's not going to be a match, but definitely the closest we've seen Austin in a, in a full on match, uh, you know, considering how much he has gone through, like with the neck problems that he suffered, like back in the nineties. So it's, yeah, it's and just it's, 20 it's, years yeah. of not doing this, you know, what's yeah. that going to make him look like? That's, that's to me, that to me is probably the biggest draw of WrestleMania this year is to see how much physicality Stone Cold Steve Austin um, takes part in at his age and um, what he's going to look like. Yeah, I'm awesome. So yeah, WrestleMania coming up uh, April 2nd and 3rd. Uh, you guys are going to do a lot of continuing coverage on that and looking forward to what plans uh, you're, uh, you're um, uh, uh, booking on the, uh, on those days. It's going to be it's going to be very busy, man. <laughs> it's an, it's a very under it's a very well understated uh, comment. <laughs> so much. Yeah. I mean, this is the first year where it feels like we have a full schedule again. And of course, like, you know, COVID interrupting 2020. And then last year, I think you had a lot more, but this year is, is where it feels like everything's coming back in full force, where it'll be impossible to watch everything if you're, if you want to. You and John used to travel a lot to these WrestleManias um, like several years back. And then I'm, I'm guessing you guys are now happy that uh, you're watching at home now, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, part of that decision, I think uh, it was driven by COVID. Well, like we had plans on doing a live show up until COVID shut everything down in 2020. So part of that is that is that reason, you know, John has a very young family at home. So that's probably maybe at least a, at least a partial contributor. Um, and also because there's so much stuff to cover, I think we'll have an easier job of doing it from home, sure. watching on broadcast rather than having to, you know, physically get to all these places, find, you know, try to battle a uh, commute through the city and then try to find parking and then try to find a place afterwards to go back to the hotel to record a show it's just it's it's a lot you know it's enjoyable it's fun but um i i certainly don't mind doing all of that from my couch Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah still looking forward to your coverage uh that week and it's going to be interesting and uh, before we go um for for those of you who don't know um yeah, uh, by the way, AEW has been on fire for the past few years. Uh, they're on linear television on the Turner Networks, uh, both TNT and TBS. Uh, uh, if mind me uh, asking you, Way, how would you how would you uh, uh, grade probably the the past few years of AEW and how they've been definitely been on on WWE's uh, he's a uh, heels as far as like you know putting out the best content out there because they're definitely the best uh, wrestling I've I've been watching uh, this week. I would say. Every yeah, um, I guess if we're going to go by letter grades, I, I think I would grade them an A, honestly. Um, it's it is it's completely, I think, fulfilled the um, the appetite that certainly like longtime fans, I would say maybe older fans, you know, fans craving more realism and like, I think, um, depth in their professional storytelling, uh, sorry, professional wrestling storytelling and and just getting back to the purity of like, you know, having a wrestler go out there and come up with his own promos or like, you know, dictate the pace of his own matches and the content of his own matches. Like it's really brought that style of professional wrestling back to the forefront on national TV. It's been successful, very like overachieving. I think, you know, based uh, uh, of any prior expectations mm-hmm. since WCW, we haven't seen competition like it in 20 years. So um, I, I mean, I, I can't really say, I mean, I, I really kind of don't give them an A plus because that would, you know, dictate. Oh that yeah, it's not perfect, it's perfect. Obviously, it's not perfect. There are a lot of things to criticize about it, but I think for the most part, it's the show that everybody looks for, looks forward to the most, and those pay per views have almost always delivered. What I love about AEW is that it's it's not just the brand. I mean, they really focus on their their, their biggest stars. They're not uh, their homegrown stars as well as. Uh, for as um as uh, stars from the past uh, like you know you got CM Punk and and Brian Danielson joining the company over the past year just like the uh, people who know from the mainstream uh from WWE and then just transferring that over uh it's it's really an awesome just an awesome time just to just to watch this product grow and grow and as far as like you know I mean obviously I mean there's still a lot to imp- uh, still a lot to um improve on but uh, it's definitely like what i consider is like traditional professional wrestling 
um, uh, just coming together and working well in uh, well in traditional television. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they've been doing a fantastic job, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing, like, in the years to come, with Ring of Honor now under the fold, like how how they continue to grow and expand. Absolutely. And uh, final question here: uh, with the rising popularity of AEW and the amalgamation of the independent circuit, uh, do you consider uh, the industry in a uh, more of in a healthy state right now than probably ten years ago? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think it depends on what um, metric you're looking at or how you're looking at that. I mean, in, if you're looking strictly from the mainstream, the fact that we have a strong number two competitor now uh, as an alternative for the WWE to, to choose from on our TVs every single week, I think that's tremendously healthy. Um, I think if you're looking strictly at the independents, you know, even though AEW is has, has risen, um, I think it's... I mean, that and, and WWE, you know, has has definitely affected um, perhaps independent wrestling as a whole. Um, and, you know, I think some of that remains to be seen, too, because COVID certainly probably took the biggest bite out of, out of the indies. And if anything, maybe AEW even kind of helped keep it alive with, like, you know, their dark tapings and whatnot. But um, it's not the same independent wrestling scene that it was probably, like, three years ago, three, four sure. years ago. Uh, especially this is especially true you know in, in outside of North America um, but I think there continues to be a lot of talents you know that are available out there um, the big struggle I would say is competing for the audience's attention and their time absolutely you know because AEW already fulfills so much of that WWE for people that are still watching fulfill so much of that to the point where now even like in New Japan who you know like three years ago I think was like the top um, I don't I sense a, a very, very much a dwindling interest in that. So even if you're like an impact wrestling or like, you know, this new ROH, like how much, how much of the audience's time can you have when I would say the majority of, of, of the people are probably already satisfied with the output that's on TV. So that is the biggest question. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's a lot of content. So it's uh, definitely, but what I like about it, it's a lot of choices. Uh, to watch uh, and at times it can be good for the um, good for the talents which is uh, uh, pretty good even though if uh, you know there might be some dwindling interest in some of the independent circuits but uh, yeah overall it's it's really fun to watch and see how it evolves from here so so uh, Wei Ting uh, from postwrestling.com and by the way uh, you know these guys you your partner John Pollock and so many other personalities uh, you all talk a lot of stuff uh, not just wrestling as well as the MCU, uh, what's going on in comic books, movies. You do a wonderful, you do, uh, you guys do such a wonderful job uh, each and every week. Uh, the floor is yours, man. How can people uh, continue to follow you? Well, thank you very much, uh, Jake. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that like, you know, you've, you've been, um, I think so active, like with your professional wrestling, as- or sorry, professional broadcasting aspirations. Um, I've, I've known you for a long time and have spoken to you privately about all of this. So it's awesome to see you like, I mean, you sound great on air, so it's it's great to see you take um, such a big step forward with, with your career. I appreciate um, it, man, me, coming from you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And for me, like I, you know, I love talking about pro wrestling, but I also love talking about broadcasting and and this sort of nerdy stuff in general. So if people want to reach me for that any reason for for those, uh, you can follow me at on Twitter at way zero nine three seven. Uh, or if you want to follow all of our professional wrestling coverage, it is at Post Wrestling or PostWrestling.com. All right. And we're going to wrap it up there. Way, thanks so much for doing this. Been listening to you for many years. Can't appreciate it enough. And we'll get back to all your favorite artists and hits coming up. This is Chicago's Underground, WCRX 88.1.